you're in it. You go, all right, toilet, me and you. <laughs> Kia ora, team. My name is Ben, and this beautiful creature is Amy. How lovely. Thanks. Today, we're going to talk about what happens when we eat some protein. So, protein gets broken down into amino acids, which we then use to repair and restore tissue. Good. If we have too many amino acids, can we store them? No. Well, that's a shame. Mm. So what we do is we break them down, and the nitrogen part gets excreted as... Urea. Good, you're not going to do that thing you did before. <laughs> it's probably for the best. And then the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen part gets stored as... Woo! Fat. Good. Another thing that can happen with extra amino acids is we can convert them into... Carbohydrate or glucose. Good. And that process is called... Gluconeogenesis. Good. <laughs> Sassy. <laughs> Gluco, because it sounds like... Glucose. Glucose. Neo, because neo means... You. 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 And genesis, because it's the first book in the Bible and it means to... Create. Create. Gorgeous. Can we only create glucose from protein? Uh, what else can we use to create it? Pyruvate, lactic acid, glycerol. Awesome. Yes. Boom! Good. Hi team, today Charlotte is going to tell you what happens when we eat a chocolate bar. So, chocolate bar contains a lot of... Fantastic. And when we ingest carbohydrates, it gets broken down into... Glucose. Glucose can be stored in... The liver and muscles. Fantastic. Now, what is it stored as? Glycogen. Good. What is the process of turning glucose into glycogen? Glycogenesis. Glycogenesis. Excellent. What happens if we eat too much chocolate and our liver and muscle stores are full? Stored it as fat. Good. <coughs> right, Ben has not eaten in 8 hours, so his blood sugar level is going to be? Low. What's going to happen? Um, glucagon is going to be released. So glucagon is a? Hormone. And it's the opposite to? Insulin. Fantastic. So, glucagon is going to raise Ben's blood sugar level by turning glycogen, which is stored in our liver, into glucose. And that process is called? Glycogenolysis. Fantastic. Good luck writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to raise Ben's blood glucose level by increasing the amount of glucose in Ben's blood. Kia ora team, my name's Ben. And I'm Joey. And welcome to On The Bean Bags with Ben and Joey. Our first question is from Michelle Lloyd. Michelle has said, what is the definition of lactate threshold? Well, Michelle, that's a fantastic question. Now, the answer is the exercise intensity at which lactate starts to accumulate in the bloodstream. Good. Something to remember, Michelle, is this is also known as the beginning of the end. If someone's exercising at their lactic threshold or above their lactic threshold, the byproducts are going to start to accumulate, so eventually they're going to have to stop exercising. We've got our next message, and this is from Karen. Oh. Kia ora, Karen. <laughs> Karen asks... What is the definition of VO2 max? VO2 max is the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during an incremental exercise test. An incremental exercise test is the one that we put Ben on early in the semester where he slowly increased the speed and intensity. And at its absolute maximum is where he was bringing in the most amount of oxygen into his body or into his tissues so that aerobic metabolism could take place. I bet Karen would like to know what VO2 max depends on. Well Karen, 
VO2 max depends on two factors. They are the central factors and peripheral factors. What's a central factor? Well, I like to use the courier example. So, if I was buying a parcel from the States, it needs to get delivered to MIT. But that's pretty useless because I'm in a different department. I'm not MIT. MIT is a huge place. It needs to get to the individual person, which is me. So the central factors would be it getting it from the US to MIT. And the peripheral factors will be getting it from MIT to myself. So central factors are our lungs, our heart, and our blood vessels, which transport the oxygenated blood to the tissue. It's all good getting the oxygenated blood to the tissue, but it's pretty useless if it can't get to the mitochondria. That's where myoglobin comes into place, and that's our peripheral factor. So that's getting it from the cell membrane of the muscle into the mitochondria. Cool story, bro. So our central factors tend to be in the center, and our peripheral factors are in the periphery. Yeah, well said. That's probably what I should have said. Cool story, bro. Yeah. Have we got another text message? Let's have a look. Ah, this one comes in from Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Kelly. Okay, so you want to know the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure? That's I've got question. this. You got this? I've oh, got excellent. this. So, systolic blood pressure is the pressure that's exerted on the walls of an artery during contraction of the heart's ventricles. Whereas, diastolic is the pressure exerted on the walls of an artery when the heart's ventricles are at rest. So, Joey often says, when you think of diastolic, think of die because this is when your heart is not beating. Blood pressure, if it's 120 over 80, our 120 would be our systolic, because there's more pressure when the heart's contracting. Our 80, the smaller number, would be the diastolic, when the heart's relaxing. You got another text message. Ah, oh, who's this one from? Oh, Daz. Shot Dazza. Darren asks, if stroke volume increases at rest and submaximal exercises, after chronic endurance training, why does cardiac output stay the same during rest and submaximal exercise? That's a, that's a very specific question, that is. Yeah, shot that. <laughs> Wait a sec. So, what's stroke volume first? Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out of the ventricles, normally the left ventricle, per contraction. That is the key per contraction. Okay, so Daz wants to know if we do lots of endurance training our stroke volume increases at rest and submaximal exercise. Yep. So that must be a good thing. Yep. But why does our cardiac output stay the same? Well, let's put the formula of cardiac output up on the screen. So, bang. I will probably best put it here. Okay, let's put it there, right? So, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So, at submaximal and resting intensities, Stroke volume has decreased. Let's put a little arrow up above stroke volume. Yep, going up, perfect. Times heart rate. What's heart rate gonna do if the equation is staying the same? So if cardiac output stays the same, then the heart rate's gonna decrease. Yep, to counter it out. And this is why endurance athletes have really low resting heart rates because their stroke volumes yeah. are so high. Good. Oh, what's that I hear? It's another message. This time it's from Junior. Junior wants to know, endurance training causes an increase in minute ventilation at maximal exercise intensities by increasing what of breathing? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So before we were talking about the heart with our stroke volume and cardiac output, now we're talking about... Breathing. Gotcha. So ventilation is like you ventilate a house, air comes in and out. So minute ventilation, so what's that gonna be? It's the amount of air that we're expiring out, which will be the same as inspiration, per minute. Gotcha. That's what it stands for. VE stands for the volume of expired air. This question needs to say, endurance training causes an increase in minute ventilation at maximal exercise intensity. So if we do heaps of endurance training, our VE is gonna increase by increasing tidal volume and frequency of breathing. As you can see, this is very similar to our cardiac output equation. Cardiac output is kind of the same as minute ventilation because it's the amount of air that is breathed out per minute and 
for cardiac output, it was the amount of blood that is expelled per minute out of the ventricle. So it's very similar. Tidal volume is the same as stroke volume. So stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out per beat. Well, tidal volume is the amount of air expired per breath. Now, heart rate is the same as frequency. Heart rate, the amount of times the heart beats per minute, and frequency of breathing is the rate that we breathe per minute. So they're very similar formulas. If VE is gonna increase, then tidal volume increases as well. So the amount we breathe normally at maximum exercise increases, as well as the frequency of breathing increases. Cool story, bro. So what you're saying is when we do endurance training, Yep. We need more air in our lungs per minute. Yep. So, what was that one? That was VE. Um, so to do that, we breathe deeper. Yep. Which was tidal volume. Fantastic. And we breathe faster, which, which was breathing frequency. Shot, Shot Junior? Junior? That's yeah. a good cool question. Good to know. Good to know. Oh, what's this? Oh, we've got a message from the lovely Amy. This is always, trouble. <laughs> it's always good to hear from Amy. All right, what's, what's Amy got? Um, Amy wants to know, what's the hormone that's produced that increases with endurance training? Mm. It's quite a few hormones, but I know that one will increase causing an increase in red blood cells. Well, let's talk about that one, shall we? Cool. Well, that hormone is called erythropoietin, or EPO. And EPO is a hormone produced in the... Kidneys. Kidneys, yeah, you need to know that that increases with endurance training. Now, EPO increases the production of red blood cells, which means that more oxy oxygen can arrive at working muscles. Great, so if I was Lance Armstrong, yep. this is the type of um, hormone I'd want a lot of. Yeah, so you just inject it, which will cause the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. More red blood cells mean that we can carry more oxygen to our muscles. More oxygen to our muscles, more energy we can produce, the faster we are going to be. Seems legit. So urethropoietin yep. um, makes, causes red blood cells, and another name for red blood cell is a... Erythrocyte. Woo, isn't that lucky? You put me on the spot there. Good man. Hi, my name is T, and this is Shawnee. <laughs> Welcome to... Alan <laughs> Shone, question please. So T. Yes. Where does aerobic metabolism take place in the cell? Aerobic? Mitochondria. And where does anaerobic glycolysis take place in the cell? Cytoplasm. <laughs> Say something, Raj. <laughs> Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.